Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Sal Play Star Trek Online. Once again, joined by Drake. Alright, let's go see what the Sphere Builders have been doing in the Kelvin timeline. Probably nothing good. Let's begin. It's nice to know that Starfleet um, Temporary Investigations not only can, you know, travel between time, but it can also travel between dimensions. It depends if they're... Um... Oh yes, guess common trip yeah. inside. <laughs> it depends if their their time travel system works on um, linear or multiverse theory. And this one. A Romulan ship accidentally travelled here. Through a singularity, they found themselves in 2230. If, it, if it's linear time, then USS Kelvin in battle. This it's like the Kelvin time timeline shouldn't be a thing, so it's got to be multiverse result, theory. We now refer to it as well, the that's, Kelvin time. That is but how then, the Kelvin time was the created. Builders communicate with their operatives through yeah, because the then in the older Star Trek is sort of anything else was time travel, sort yes. of it's dealt time, with is um, linear time. Yeah, I'll, um, tell you what, I'll, I'll go through how that works at the end of the episode. Because, yeah. um. <laughs> anything I've. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading multiple. <laughs> to quote Doctor Who, it's timey wimey stuff. <laughs> in 2387, <laughs> I'm stuck in my jacket. I'm no longer stuck in my jacket. I'm, I'm so glad that people couldn't see me then. Uh, I shall recommend it, gentlemen. I need to make a cup of tea. Because tea is the drink of gods. Leave a like for tea, everyone. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Hang on, I'm just going to be outside for a second. No. I did not answer that hail. Stop it. We are under attack and require. I do hope you've come to fight, Patok. If not, yeah, let's go back to the Klingons. Why not? Oh, the Yorktown's a Constitution class in this area. Reading multiple Klingon life signs on Yorktown's page. Of course, the spear builders used the Klingons in this timeline. Then again, after Nero that. did to them, this is the USS Yorktown. We are under attack by Klingon boarding parties. Can you provide assistance? All right, let's get over to the Yorktown. I just realised Drake is um, currently still eating, so that's why he's going to be a bit quiet. <laughs> yeah, as you can Apologies. see. Apologies. Yeah, that's alright. <laughs> Over here. As you can see, guys, this is the Abrams verse timeline bridge. But it seems they've turned down the lens flares. Huh. Not of the lens flares. Greetings. I am Science Officer 0718. Thank you for your very timely assistance. Could you see to Admiral Garrett's medical needs? Of course. Where is Admiral Garrett? Ah, there he is. Or as I'm going to call him. Thanks. I'm not sure which Starfleet you're in exactly. But I'm guessing you won't mind giving my crew a hand here. The Klingons really did a number on us. Huh. I thought this guy was played by um, Admiral Elric. I guess they changed that. That's annoying. Let's revive his crew.
Thanks. I hope you're here to do. Is he wearing the motion picture uniform while the rest of them are wearing um, Kelvin timeline TOS uniforms? Thank you. I thought we were finished. Clean We could use some help putting out these fires. Come over here after you've put out the last fire. Over here. All right. We were about to begin sabotage operations on the sphere when the Klingons came to. Glad to hear it. We've got explosives ready to go. Use the starboard console. Together we can triangulate our scanners. Hey. <laughs> nice use of the minigame. Admiral Garrett, I believe we found a suitable location. I have reviewed your proposed infiltration. I'll stay on the Yorktown to assist Admiral Garrett and his crew. We'll monitor your progress from the bridge and provide tech. Uh, we're gonna need our environmental suits for this one. Given that the inside of spheres is usually quite hostile. Apparently, no. Commander, kill those intruders! I think they may have changed the voice actor for, uh, because I had heard it was somebody else. To date, the most effective Starfleet tactic has been to trigger a critical series of... Experiment 267. Receiving data. I have no idea the sphere builders were involved in so many alternate... Well, to be fair, when they're trying to, you know, rewrite a, a, a reality to suit them, if one fails, you might as well try somewhere else. How do I get the why do I get the feeling the Enterprise J is going to turn up at some point? I was part of the team that devised the sphere neutralization tactics aboard USS Enterprise. After our initial success, I was deployed to the Yorktown to share my expertise on site. Fair enough. Experiment 3331. The expanse grew at an acceptable rate until it was discovered by the Iconian Dominion Alliance. After intense resistance, we were able to decimate their core systems with targeted micro-expenses. But their desperation assault in subspace led to a complete entropic breakdown and, ultimately, universal disruption. Galactic habitable spaces? Zero. Life signs? Indeterminate. This oh, wow. data exterminated entire galaxies with they managed to defeat the Herconians as well, which were allied with the Founders. Jesus. Alright. <clears throat> Guess we know what would have happened if the Dominions won the... Uh, sorry, if the Arconians won the Arconian War. The Sphere Builders would have killed them. It's interesting to know that they uh, had to ally with the... Um, the Dominion, it though. seems your alliance with the Klingons has been profitable, builders. It has. Like the Zindi, they are eager for conquest. <laughs> However, the technology you have provided destroys as well as creates. The resistance has been disruptive to our progress. Your promises appear thin, envoy. I'm going to put a straight lightning you, warning on this. All is going according to plan. Nothing they will do will keep us from our goals. 
And yet, <laughs> I see a familiar disruption has presented itself again. Hello, familiar I disruption know. here. I suggest <laughs> letting your clinics do what they do best. I will deal with this disruption. I wonder how they subverted the Klingon honor system it's in this universe. It's time you learned that you cannot prevail, intruder. You will fall to ruin. Meddler, intruder, interloper. Make up your mind, guys. Which are we? <laughs> uh, you know what? I should probably... Follow the android. You, I have had enough of you. The Tutarians were a peaceful race until your misbegotten alliance committed an act of genocide. We were all but annihilated. Only a scant few of us escaped to safety. Lost and forgotten within a dimension. I'm just waiting for my plasma flamethrower to just start yeah, being the fat alliance to the sphere has builders? given us the means to manipulate events. We had begun to undo the damage you have done to us. Quantum realms such as this are ours to study without risk to our own. And should this realm unravel, there is an infinite number of realms remaining to us. Yes. Just as you were willing to do so to achieve your goals, do not presume to judge me, murderer. The Expanse Protocol will wipe you. Something is happening. The sphere is emitting a high level of thermobaricrate. And it begins. So we're going to stop this. I'd like to know more, though, of how the Alliance caused the disruption of their realm. So first, I have finished working on the sphere network. Prepare the final charge for detonation. This may I be mean, another example of uh, the best of intentions, you know. Similar to like what happened with Sela. The Alliance is going to make a mistake in the future. Final though. charge deployed. We can return and initiate the detonation chain on your com. Okay. Experiment 4472. Projections in. Get out of here. We're probably gonna have to fight our way out as per usual. And we'll um we'll help help the uh Yorktown and General uh, Admiral Garrett. Fight our way out. Spear builder ships inbound. Let's detonate the charges and get rid of these spheres. Nice work over there. 
It was rough for a moment, but you both... Oh! What the... I... I'll see you back on the ship, sir. Most curious. I believe that wound occurred due to a temporal shift. Something has happened elsewhere. He's starting to look like he did in that episode of Enterprise. Hmm. A question for another time, perhaps. <coughs> in the end, you came through for us. On behalf of Starfleet and the Yorktown crew, thanks. Indeed. Safe travels to you and your crew. See, this is why Star Trek Online is such a good way of merging all the cannons together. <laughs> Causes less arguments that way. Right, let's hang on. The envoy's Daniel. been busy since our last meeting. I think we can add the Spear Builders to our list of known TLF associates and members after this encounter. The Builders are no strangers to temporal war. Their experience could tip the balance of power against us. Fortunately, their ability to operate in our dimension is extremely limited. For now. Hmm. What do I want? You know, I'll probably take the uh, the Batmuth actually. Some time ago, there was a temporal disruption involving the USS Enterprise C. We thought the matter was fully resolved, but there was. An oversight. We need to Wait, find Daniel, one of the your Enterprise face is C back to normal. A temporal duplicate of Starfleet Admiral Tanay. Until we reconcile her displacement, the timeline is in jeopardy. There's one person in particular that can provide the location of the survivors. Sela of Romulus. We believe she's operating in the Cytor system. Meet me there to search for Sela and enlist her aid. Hmm. Stay safe out there. Well guys, looks time next. Next on the next episode, we're going to be uh, tracking down Admiral Sela. Be nice to see her again. See how she's changed after the revelation of the Arconian War. <laughs> anyway, from me, Drake, and Sai, when he finally finished making his cup of tea, we will catch you next time. Take care for now. Well, to quote Sai at the beginning of the last episode of Star Tre South Play Star Trek Online and to do another episode of Trek Law where we discuss the Charlie Beta or Alpha Gannons or the Star Trek Online Gannon what how does the time machine or time mechanics work in Star Trek Online as the question was raised is it linear or is it multiverse theory well originally you would be mistaken, especially if you've only watched DS9, in thinking that it's just linear time, as whenever the Prophets are talking to a member of the cast, they always refer to them as being linear. But the thing you have to remember is, the Prophets are creatures living in an entity that means they are outside linear time, so what would happen is that, to their view, it is linear but they don't have any context for that or past present or future as we said timey wimey from a non-linear non-subjective point of view it's just a ball of stuff things are happening but the answer if you look at star trek across the entirety of its run it is all multiverse theory the alpha canon the kelvin timeline these are all separate universes and oh, the mirror universe or any of the different universes created when there's been issues with time and an event has changed like for example the mirror universe instead of shaking the hand of the Vulcans when they landed on earth during first contact he decided instead of you know raising his hand in a handshake 
when he realised he couldn't do the bomb to do, he pulled out a shotgun and started shooting them and they stripped the ship apart. This was the beginning of the Terran Empire. Or the issue with Gabriel Bell in the Bell Riots. He was actually, instead of him being there to protect the hostages in one universe, he was replaced by Benjamin Sisko temporarily and then they swapped out their IDs later on, which, you know, from that point forward would have been the Prime Universe. So the way to view it is that the Prime Universe is essentially the preferred timeline we're following, where everything has gone right for the characters, or wrong, it, it's followed a specific progression of that story in one particular instance, whereas the beta canon could be another one where, you know, there is the... Um, Pathfinder project that eventually leads to Voyager and a fleet returning to the Delta Quadrant with Captain Chakotay leading the way for Voyager and um, <laughs> various issues with the um, transphasic warp technology. Sorry, slipstream technology. I get those two mixed up sometimes. Um, but the way in which to solve it was waiting for them in the Delta Quadrant. But in order to find that, you'll have to read those books. Or the Federation War with the Borg, where the Borg decided that their technological and biological distinctiveness was irrelevant. You will be annihilated. Resistance is futile, but welcome. Could be another one. Now, bear in mind, when I first read that, I had chills down my spine. You know, the Borg have had enough. We're going to wipe you out. And the subsequent origins of the Borg in that one being revealed or in another the Borg were created by the probe Vija interacting with a species of intelligent machines but eventually due to their interactions with the Voyager probe it created the Borg itself but there are many different ways and if you think about it and there are still ways for all of them to be correct and none of them to be correct such is the problem with multiverse theory. And you, you look at... Uh, one of the greatest examples of this is a version of the Enterprise where Worf came back from a tournament and he had basically won the tournament. And then he came back and he was not... And then he was switching between different times where this tournament had different effects or the cake at his birthday was different or the captain was there or he wasn't. Um, and eventually it led to all the various different versions of the Enterprise E being pulled into the same space, which caused a big problem. And they had to to figure out which was the correct one that that wharf was from in order to restore them all to their timeline. Unfortunately, a desperate Enterprise D um, tried to prevent them from being sent back because the Borg could overrun their universe. There's very few planets left, very few ships left, very few functioning governments, no resistance. Unfortunately, they tried to disable that ship, but ended up destroying it by accident. So, anyway, with all that, various things I've talked about, their technology works on multiverse theory. You have to put in the correct spatial and temporal coordinates in order to get to the correct place. So it is not beyond the possibility that you put in different spatial or temporal coordinates and you can end up in, say, the Kelvin timeline like we did in the previous episode of Cell Play Star Trek Online. But um, additional examples of other times being created. Uh, so we had the timeline where Quark and Nog went back in time and for whatever reason would have stayed and either tried to live it up or you know the paranoia of human really taking on the furring addiction there uh, had at the time would have been either you know dissected and their ships used for various things or <laughs> oh cork he had such interesting plans for that another example would be harry kim being swapped with one of his friends and him still living on earth helping to design a new series of runabouts and his subsequent trials to try and get back to his own universe. And uh, it turning out that Tom Paris had not actually joined the crew because for some whatever reason, Kim was not part of the ship. 
Tom Paris was not recruited and he was on probation. Another one is the future where Benjamin Sisko died in an accident. That was then linked to Jake Sisko. And he lived out his life trying to save his father until he figured out what the issue was. And so he caused a slingshot in order to send his father back to the correct point. That might not have happened in one universe, and you know, the Klingons had eventually taken over DS9 in that universe, and things have changed a lot. So there are many different examples of potential futures and or past events that could have been changed that drastically change the universe and spawn a new dimension, creating an entirely new verse. So this is something I have been thinking about. Is like it with the arguments that people are going on recently with like you know Discovery, Love Decks, Strange New Worlds, and various other things. Is you can still make all of them possible. With multiverse theory. Okay, it's a bit of a cop out, and I can people could sit, uh, sit there and go, mm, you're just picking and nitpicking, and not, oh yeah, that's what's like. People's head cannon can also be like a multiverse. Think of that another universe. Like, personally, I like the storyline where Picard never gives up the into the Enterprise until much later, until eventually he becomes the, you know, ambassador of Vulcan, which was originally the storyline they'd set up for the Prime Tap universe for Countdown until they changed it for Picard where, you know, he was commander of the USS Verity and Data was the captain of the Enterprise E. Which is how they were still able to fit it in with uh, what happened for the Hobo Star incident because Countdown directly influences that. But anyway, uh, I will put the list of each episode that involves time travel that I can find in the description below. And hell, uh, if you want, you can maybe um, come to a different conclusion myself. We can chat about it, maybe have a podcast about it. As at some point, I do plan to do a podcasty like system where we talk about these things. I'm still working on a working title for it, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Anyway. This wasn't the uh, planned second episode of Star Trek Lore, but uh, it's been an interesting one because I will be releasing this as well at the end of the episode and also as a standalone one for the, my uh, my lore viewers, the ones who don't want to watch the gameplay. But hey, anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time.